Well, what we know from research is about a third of all children、um, are bullied in our nation's schools, and、uh, so that's a lot. You know, one third of all children, and it goes from twenty percent to seventy percent, depending on the circumstances and the environment. But、um, you know, the the challenge, the challenge with bullying, is that about seventy percent of it goes undetected by the adults in the environment, because kids are very good, you know, at hiding, you know, and doing things secretly.、Um, but still, it's a tremendous amount of kids that.、Um, Are being bullied, and now I think it's even different because of technology. Meaning that you know, when kids were making fun of me on the bus or on the playground, that's one thing, very painful. But now, when you're being bullied,、um, and someone puts something on Instagram or whatever social media platform it is, all of a sudden the entire school knows about it. So、um, it's a different space as well. Well, unfortunately, schools like quick fixes, right? So they buy programs for bullying prevention that, you know, create rules for the environment. But rules are never going to change the way people believe, right? They're not going to help shift the culture and climate of an organization. They're not going to teach people skills. So really, that's my whole career has been really thinking through what do schools need to do to support healthy children's development, meaning. What do the adults need to know?、Uh, what do they need to be able to do to support children's healthy development? And then, what do we have to teach children、um, in order to prevent these problems from the first place? So it's a complex model. It means that you have to start as early as possible, and you have to keep going because life changes and children's development changes over time. There are four kind of pieces to a ruler, which is the name of the approach that we have built over the last 20 years.、Um, the first is mindsets, right? Do people believe that how children feel matters? And the truth is,、um, not everybody really cares about how kids feel.、Uh, even if you think about it in the medical space, it wasn't until then. Yeah, adults, right? Because adults are raising kids, right? Children have the fundamental right to be safe in a school or a home. That's their right for being alive in this world.、Um, interestingly enough, you know, if you look at data,、um, you know, people were performing surgery on children without giving them anesthesia until the middle of the last century. No, they didn't believe their pain systems were as developed as adults, which is obviously crazy.、Um, so we have to shift our belief systems about children、um, and about ourselves too. Like that, how I feel matters. You know, I'm a guy.、Um, I'm not a tough guy like my father wanted me to be. But、um, you know, I when I speak my about my childhood, oftentimes in my pain、um, and my bullying, I have males who say to me things like, "I would never even tell my own child that I had bullying like you had, because my child would think I am weak." So do you see, it's a belief system. That means that. Feeling fear or anxiety or shame makes you lesser than,、um, and so we have to eradicate that belief system because it's just not true. We're human beings who experience emotions, and all emotions matter.、Um, and if we have beliefs that, you know, men can't feel fear or shame or anxiety、um, and only anger,、um, we're not going to have a healthy society. Nor parents who are able to raise children who are healthy. The second is that we have to develop the skills. So, we've、uh, created an acronym that we use called Ruler, which stands for the skills of emotional intelligence. The first is recognizing emotions. So, we're in this interview right now, and I'm looking at your facial expression, your body language, and listening to your tone of voice, and I'm trying to make meaning out of it. Right? Are you interested in what I'm saying? Are you judging what I'm saying? You know, are we having a good time, a bad time? That's part of life, right? You're doing that all the time. You're Making meaning out of your interactions, and do we teach people how to do that accurately? Are we self-aware of how, like, how am I feeling right now? Am I anxious? Am I comfortable? Am I overwhelmed? Am I apprehensive? What is the feeling that I'm having right now? Do I know why I'm having those feelings? Do I know why you're having those feelings? Do I understand feelings? So what I find in my research is that people are not very skilled at even labeling their feelings. So they can't tell the difference between anger and disappointment, for example. 
And so again, what we find is that people have not been taught this. They really haven't been taught to differentiate, you know, disappointment from anger or anxiety from fear. Um, and what we say is that you have to name it to tame it, right? You have to label it because by labeling your feelings, right, it gives you access to a way of thinking about it that will help you regulate it effectively. So we've gotten to the R, the U, and the L of emotional intelligence. The last two is expressing and regulating emotions. Yeah, so what research shows is that when schools do this work with quality and high implementation fidelity, I mean, they really do it, and we see shifts in students' um, academics, we see decreases in student anxiety and depression, increases in their leadership skills for teachers, we show that there's less burnout, greater job satisfaction. And for schools, we see just the environment feels more positive and there's less bullying. So pretty good outcomes that we've seen thus far and we continue to evaluate ruler in different schools. I should say what our research is showing, which is interesting, which is also aligned with our model, is that by focusing on the adults first, right, you get the greatest impact. That year one of doing ruler is not teaching a curriculum in the classroom. It's the school thinking about how do we support the adults who are about to teach these skills to kids to be those role models. So we spend the first year on adult development. Then we move to child development. And what we're showing in our research is that actually the first year, we find teachers are less stressed, a little bit happier. Um, and then the second year, we find that that it, it then impacts the students. So um, just as we would expect that helping teachers develop their emotional intelligence helps themselves, but also helps them to help kids. I think for families, the first step is be the role model, right, as the parent. So test your own emotion vocabulary. Do you know the difference between anger and disappointment as a parent? Are you comfortable expressing all emotions as a parent? And are you modeling effective emotion management for your child? Are you using healthy strategies to regulate your own feelings? And that's the question that I think parents have to ask themselves. Am I being a role model for my child? The second, is that we have to acknowledge that our children's emotions are important and that we're not going to be judges of those feelings. We're going to be scientists for our kids instead of judges. So I talk a lot about this in my book, that there are parents and people who are emotion scientists versus those who are emotion judges, right? The scientist is open to emotions, is curious, asks good questions. The judge is the teller of someone how they're feeling. Right? They don't really care about feelings. They just say everything's good or bad. Um, when they don't regulate well, they just say, this is who I am, get over it. Whereas the emotion scientist says, oh, I didn't do such a good job today. I need to ask better questions. I need to use better strategies. So first is be the role model. Second, become a scientist, not a judge. And the third is, you know, you have to work with your child to help them, A, understand their feelings, and then regulate them effectively. Well, I think it's important to distinguish like clinical therapy from developing emotional intelligence, right? Because a lot of people think this is clinical work and it's not, it's life's work, right? As you try to achieve your goals in life, you get frustrated, you get overwhelmed, you get tired, you get anxious. You're in a relationship, things go well some days, things don't go well other days. Um, that's life. You don't need, to, hopefully, it's okay. You just need to learn the skills on how to deal with life. And we're not teaching that right now in our schools. We don't really provide an emotion education, right? We provide math, science, literature, social studies, whatever it is. Exactly. And the truth is, they're not learned through, they're learned informally. Unfortunately, many people are not good at it. So we learn informally how to do the bad things. I mean, let's face it, you know, my mother, God bless her, she was a lovely woman, 
and she meant well, but she did not know how to deal with her emotions. You know, she was very anxious. I remember when I was being bullied, she'd say things like, oh my goodness, honey, I can't believe you're being bullied. Don't tell me everything. I'll have a breakdown. And I would be saying things like, well, I'm having the breakdown. <laughs> and then my father, who was, you know, a very tough guy, he'd say, son, you toughen up. That's not teaching skills, right? That's telling a kid who's not really a tough guy, who might not ever be a tough guy, not to talk about your feelings. So I think we have to broaden our definition of what it means to be a successful individual, to um, being a good decision maker, to having positive relationships, to um, having well-being. And when we do that, then maybe what we do downstream, right, in our education system will change. And um, hopefully that will, A, decrease the amount of stress and anxiety in our nation, um, and B, you know, help all students develop the skills they need to get through life. <laughs>